Hi, hello, welcome to Digital Storytelling. Today we are going to talk about dialogues, uh, scripting and point of view. So far we have identified uh, different traditions and genres within uh, adventure games and other kinds of digital storytelling products. Then uh, when we go to dialogues, we need to go to the specific level of the creation of these products and try to uh, uh, choose the best style to communicate the emotions and the transformations uh, among our uh, pool of characters. Today we are going to see what we can start uh, practicing in relation to these uh, writing skills, how we can relate the script to a structure and how we can, uh, well, uh, read other scripts uh, done by other professionals and try to learn from their writing technique. When talking about narrative uh, in games, we really refer to narrative in uh, interactive formats. Uh, play and immersion are always constant in the history of uh, literature. We have seen several examples of uh, games within literature and uh, mm, how uh, narrative uh, can be embedded into uh, interactive experiences. We have also uh, reviewed uh, the concept of game, explaining what kind of uh, challenges we can present and how these challenges can be related to uh, different aspects of uh, what a game can be. We'll see more about this uh, when talking about variables. What we have uh, also commented is the way a story is related to the structure and how that is translated in terms of navigation among different states, whatever these states are pages or levels or different parts of the story. We can also agree easily that uh, there are huge differences between a kind of a story or another, okay? In uh, this uh, graphic, you can see, for example, here down, what is the structure when uh, you are mainly uh, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, playing as an action game. So you might be killing uh, or you might be finishing different parts of the story and you won't come back to those parts of the story. In story-driven adventures, you usually need to deal, negotiate, exchange. You might want to go to a shop, buy stuff, come back later, buy other things, come back to your boss, tell them to you have done this or, or you want to do that, and having a new mission. So obviously it's more kind of circular. Okay. As commented before, this deals with the uh, interpretation of the story in terms of linear sequential terms, okay? So it is important to deal with emotions. If the story is linear, you need to transmit that to the user. The user needs to know this is going to uh, an important part. This is achieving the climax. This is achieving a moment of tension. We are still starting. We are uh, close to the end, uh, all these things, obviously, uh, the user will deal with uh, expectations and when it's uh, enjoying a product or, or just using a product uh, the enjoyment might depend on the management of those expectations. In that sense the screenwriter needs to communicate uh, to, to situate the, the user in a part of the story so it needs to uh, to help the, the user to advance efficiently through the story, to avoid some kind of misleadings, okay? Uh, being a script writer implies, remember we are talking about one team, you know, one member uh, of a team, no? It's, in this case, you are a, a one-man uh, uh, team production. But you have to take creative decisions in the sense of uh, where uh, you want your uh, user to be all the time. 
how much time you want your user to spend doing a specific uh, part of the story, reading a specific part, these things. Uh, in big teams, uh, a scriptwriter is expected to coordinate the team, to transmit some kind of message that uh, is going to be communicated through different uh, layers of information, through the user interface, through the animations, through the uh, graphic design, through the um, you know uh, uh, the coding of, of different elements of, of the story. So obviously it's going to imply elements of coordination and also testing you know the results. But when talking about uh, stories, we usually need to consider who is the user, who is the user in relation to the story. Is the user the main element of the story? Is it an spectator? Well, we need to differentiate in that sense, different terms. Users are obviously the real people, the people who plays, the people who reads, the people who interacts with our products. Players uh, or avatar are the personification, the, the, the embedding of the user in the product. Okay, so the player might have some capabilities, some uh, have some powers, some uh, possibilities to change the story or just go through that. I mean, obviously that depends on the product we are talking about. And then we have obviously the character. The character is the uh, main element only in terms of storytelling. So who's the story? Who is suffering the transformations uh, that are consequence of the different elements of the story? But who is the player? how we are designing the product so the user can do things or or uh, you know it's uh, constrained to some uh, elements of interaction so uh, basically for doing that to design efficient players we design for users that uh, will take the form of, of players just to think about the difference between all these terms Think in classical uh, elements, uh, we think, uh, I don't know, prototypical examples of what a video game, a narrative video game is. You have, for example, Myst. It's a famous uh, story, kind of a little presentation of facts. You need to uh, start discovering by your own where you are, why you are there, what is the goal. It was a very famous uh, experience at that time. It's uh, from the eyes of the modernity looks a little uh, boring. If you go to this example of Matt Moyo and uh, you see uh, what you have here, you might never uh, realize exactly what is the story. You would think you are maybe the rat and this is the, the end of the story. Actually, and check the game, it's quite interesting. You are that little uh, cucarash and you are uh, reincarnated and you are just, you know, avoiding different traps, including this, uh, this uh, almost uh, dead uh, uh, rat. So it is uh, a fascinating uh, experience again. As always, the stories depend on the point of view, depending on the... Uh, on what story we are telling. Okay, so obviously the same events when they are told from a different point of view, from a different uh, character's point of view, then the story changes. In, uh, in narrative, uh, we have the use of narrative voices as well. Uh, to, uh, usually when we are working in literature, we do that as a way of taking distance the needed distance from the consequences of the action, from the motivations of the characters, you know. So we might sometimes adopt one point of view or another. We, we shift that uh, point of view. And all these uh, uh, elements have mutated from uh, literature to other media. 
The point is that when we talk about uh, video games, uh, like when we talk about uh, movies to some extent, we cannot not adopt a point of view. We always uh, tell the story from a, a point of view, from a literally, we have to show the story. That doesn't happen in literature where you can tell the facts adopting a distance per per perspective, an omniscient uh, uh, narration. But uh, in, uh, in, in movies, uh, that seems always, like it happens uh, with, with video games, it is always being a spectator, always being a voyeur, and presenting the narration as we were there, you know. The only difference is that we can, if we want, be uh, in first person as well. It's important to differentiate between narration to focalization, which is a, another concept, okay? So obviously we cannot use focalization zero, which is what I commented before in relation to other media, okay? In video games and movies, we have no uh, zero focalization, okay? So uh, we need to be observers. And that's why we have narrator levels. Again, these distinctions are very typical from literature, not that important to some extent to your production pieces, but it's important to know uh, if uh, we are referring to the same action okay, of our characters, or we are describing the action of other characters, uh, and if we want to shift from one uh, level of narration to another in order to transmit <coughs> In, or <clears throat> in order to uh, transmit better the emotions that are part of the story. Think, for example, in the different kinds of interfaces and how these interfaces are modulated by the different uh, levels uh, of narration and focalization. Okay, we have the God user, uh, typical perspective, typical interface from uh, different games like strategy. Okay, it's external uh, with internal focalization. Okay, and it's fixed. We, we tend to adopt a distant point of view all the time. Although obviously there will be, um, there will be some, uh, some exceptions. There will be some games that you can adopt an external, but then later uh, get a, a different point of view. That would be a multiple, uh, like for example, in uh, imagining this kind of uh, sport simulators, like uh, you have your team and you can uh, be the, the team uh, manager and buy, uh, you know, uh, different uh, football players, but then later you want to play and you are exactly the football player. And even with that, you can change from one football player to another. So, you know, that would be a, a different case, okay? Very common as well, the puppeteer user, you know, uh, you are uh, controlling a puppet, you are uh, working on what we call third person perspective. The pilot user, you are inside the, the character, you are manipulating the character. So it's like piloting the, you know, the, this kind of robot or the mecha or, uh, you know, you are inside the main character. And uh, obviously you have other uh, kinds of voices, for example, in conversational adventures where, you know, there is a description and you can be there more kind of like in a movie, but you don't really interact. You just observe what things are happening. Which one your story is going to adapt? That depends on uh, the kind of implication you want the user to, to leave. And, uh, and also the kind of game you want to create, honestly, because genre is going to uh, determine this kind of interfaces as well. It's important to understand the um, conventions of the script. 
so you can uh, read and create your own uh, scripts if needed this is not really part of the assignment uh, you might be more comfortable creating storyboards or uh, for example creating different level stages where you prototype the conversations and you more or less define the kind of sentences a character is going to be saying to other character. So it is not necessary you use these conventions. I'm just explaining them because I think it's very instructive to read other scripts. There is a clear reason uh, that justifies why all scripts are very similar in terms of format. Adopting this kind of formats makes uh, the scripts to be read at the same uh, speed. And uh, having that representation of the information makes uh, you uh, able to calculate the duration of the product. If a script follows an adequate format, one page should be equivalent to one minute of uh, film footage. That is why it's so important to follow uh, the margins, the use of caps, the, the double paragraphs, uh, uh, interlineate, all these kind of, uh, you know, stylistic uh, features. If you use efficiently the cinematographic vocabulary, you might be uh, communicating with other members of the team exactly what you want to uh, represent on the shot. Uh, I understand that there are different techniques when you do your story and you might want to use real photographies or you might want to use graphics or you might want to use video. But in any case, uh, being able to communicate those things in terms of pre-production and in terms of uh, communication among members of different teams is, is essential. A script is also referring to elements that are um, extra diegetic, okay, or are related to the structure of the, of the story, if you want. When are we going to move to another scene? Is there going to be music uh, to allocate you or sounds to allocate you in a new place? It is not a coincidence that most of the scripts start with uh, day, night, exterior, interior, all these things. It is important to provide all the information and uh, that way when you are producing uh, an scene you can allocate the resources needed to communicate what it is intended to or characters need to talk uh, need to talk to their, their own uh, you know spirit their own souls they need to communicate uh, what uh, they have in mind what they want to uh, you know pursue it and it would be important when you write the scripts to think or the dialogues always to think the character is going to say that how that relates to the motivation of the character what is persuading in the story and to the scene to the particular scene how that relates to what the character is doing now okay each character is different you need to create characters that are well-defined and different from each other. You cannot create uh, dialogues that can be said by one character or another or another. No, because then that dialogue doesn't seem to be uh, well-written. It doesn't seem to be appropriate for the character that you were thinking of. Nowadays, our characters usually speak, but they are... Uh, quite concise and quite uh, uh, clear about what they want it happens in movies it happens in video games it happens in all kinds of media you don't want long speeches you want characters that can speak their mind with uh, uh, sentences that are you know uh, easy to recognize to identify to memorize you know so we try to reinforce with image and with uh, the language that we can use the different uh, elements of the dialogue the dialogue is only one of the many layers of information that you are providing through your experience it doesn't matter what genre you are writing you are always uh, in the need of being critical reviewing critically what you have writing and thinking 
is that necessary? Is that serving to the structure? Is that making the story to move forward? So it is important not to write as many words as you can, but to write the right ones. Writing, uh, it's not easy to calculate. You are going to write a lot, but then later you might delete, or you might change the writing, and you may change it again, and that's perfectly fine. It's a question of uh, planning, structures and when you have a proper structure writing the dialogue always to match the specifications of the story the goals of your whole uh, you know product you will see some transformation within the script to the final product you might think uh, in pre-production i'm going to tell this i'm going to express this way and then later when recording the voices or adjusting uh, different elements, you would see maybe it's too long or maybe I are not the right words. So maybe I'm going to include another language in my product. The only way you can do is to prototype. Start with dialogues, uh, start with the levels structures, then go to dialogues, then go to uh, acting. See how that works when you pronounce the dialogues, when you record the dialogues and see if that needs some kind of adaptation. So that's all for today. Uh, let's see some of the ideas, uh, but basically we have been talking about writing for our adventure games, for our digital interaction experiences. We have talked about point of view. We have seen how video games have the possibility of adopting uh, different points of view, even at the same, in the same product, not at the same time, but shifting from moment to moment of the narration if we want. And we have seen uh, different conventions in relation to uh, scripting. As always, some uh, suggested activities, some directed work in relation to these uh, concepts. I think it could be a good idea to have a look to uh, scripts, screenplays, to see how they are constructed, how challenging is uh, try to uh, make the effort to read a screenplay that you remember that you have been familiar with, you have seen the movie, for example, and see how those uh, can be uh, evoked, can be uh, making you to remember a particular a character from the game or from the movie or from the TV show. And thinking, is, is, was it that, the way it was pronounced, the way it was uh, said by the character, uh, you know, Think about why some characters are so well defined by the use of a particular dialogue style. So I, I suggested some other uh, sources in relation to that, pointing out other examples of uh, scripts. Probably the text of Stephen's uh, writing for video games is, is kind of very, very useful for these kind of things, for writing, uh, for uh, different uh, storytelling experiences like, uh, for example, particularly graphic adventures, but also for visual novels. Some other references that could be interesting, also available in the library, are related to the writing for TV. And that's all for today. I'll see you in the lab. Take care.